Welcome to this episode of Talking VoiceOvers. Today, we'll be interviewing Nadim Khaled, celebrated Egyptian voiceover artist, but also head of Gravy for the Brain Arabia. We're going to chat with him about how Arabic speakers in South Africa and around the world can join in on the voiceover industry using this great platform. Also, how to work out rates in your own currency and how social media can be an important tool for learning and to promote your services. Welcome, Nadim. It's really great to meet you. Same here. Same here. Thank you very much for hosting me today. Pleasure. You're all the way on the other side of Africa. I'm in South Africa and you're in Egypt. Yes, opposite sides of the continent. This is amazing. So you started out in architecture and then you went into voiceover and now you're gravy for the brain Arabia. How did all this happen? Wow. Okay. So <laughs> someone uh, did a little bit of research. So, so a lot of people actually don't know that I'm the, that I used to be an architect. Like I, I studied architecture and I graduated somewhere around 2012. And uh, while I was in uh, school, I started doing actually some voiceovers on the side. Like it, it was a complete coincidence. I uh, I used to model a bit for some commercials. One time I had a neck mic on, and I was like, okay, Juhaina, Asir Tabiyai. So the director was like. Oh, Oh, you have a nice voice. So I have a voiceover next week. And uh, if you want to, I you could do it. I was so excited. I didn't know what voiceover was. To my surprise, it was a Vodafone ad. It was a, a national TV commercial. And of course, it's my first one. I have no idea what I'm doing. But thank God he was a great director. So he helped me through it. He directed me. He gave me guidance. And um, ever since, I've just been going to studios locally um being called for for voiceovers in the local market but at some point when i graduated from architecture and i started doing some interior design i had two careers at the same time and i was like thinking okay so which lane should i you know drive really fast in i chose chose voiceover i was like okay so how can i take this so far how can i grow my business and treat it differently that had many 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 steps like i, I don't want to bore you right now with them uh, but thankfully, I was able to reach a, a specific level where professionals looked at me as as their their colleague, like I'm a professional like them, even though they've been doing this for 15 or whatever years. And from that point, I felt like I needed to expand and go for inter the international market, did some great work overseas. And at that point, I felt, OK, so overseas, it's happening this way with these rates, with these rules. And it's growing like very crazily and, and things are are really looking well outside but on the inside inside of egypt locally it wasn't going as fast there aren't any unions there aren't any rates basically it's some people just say it's per minute and some people say it's per copy and there are no usage fees there are nothing so i was like okay that needs to stop so i started having some entrepreneurial uh, mindset actions where i um help of a lot of professionals was able to put a rate guide we discussed a lot of things together and thankfully Hugh Edwards actually noticed that at some point and he was like hey Nadim do you want to be gravy for the brain Arabia and I was like mm -hmm, hell yeah let's do it so that, that's the short version like I really didn't want to bore you with all the details <laughs> <laughs> we like details we want to know what happened and how it all comes about you know so meanwhile you also worked for Voice Bunny, how did that fit in? After, right after I stopped working for architecture, my voiceover business was going great, but I still didn't need the whole eight hour working day to do voiceovers. So I just out of the blue from being on Voice Bunny got an email saying that they're looking for someone to join the production team. This was actually one of the biggest transformational phases of my life where somehow, some way they took me, even though they were initially looking for someone in Europe, basically because they wanted someone to cover the, the GMT plus two region. So thankfully, I was the person they chose. And to me, this was my first job as a person to actually work for someone because I like I used to work for myself all the time. So I really took on the challenge. I, I put a lot of effort in and that gave me so much knowledge and so much methods and, and, and ways to think. And even my mindset got completely shifted being in close contact with people like Alexander Torrenegra and uh, like Santiago Jaramillo, the CEO of Bunny Studio at the moment. So I met a lot of interesting people. Like I, I don't want to bore you with names, but Luisa Moscoso and uh, Claudia Ospino and others. And they really taught me a lot of stuff about creating memorable experiences. That's 
what what the whole culture in, in in Bunny Studio is built on inside like the business. It's creating memorable experiences. That changed me. That made me think. Okay, you always need to put yourself in the client's shoes, put yourself in the voiceover's shoes, and start to think and feel how they would feel. And basically, you design the process or you design the experience to suit them. I can't even describe to you how that had a huge impact on my voiceover career. I worked there for two years. Of course, one of the biggest challenges we had was there's a small issue with with the whole Bunny Studio way of charging clients and paying talents, uh, which is, again, it's a business and each business can choose whatever they want to do as long as they're fair to everyone. So that was one of the things that kept me in, in an area where uh, should I be continuing my career in Bunny Studio or should I be focusing on my voiceover career? And that's when I took the step of, okay, I'm going to focus on voiceover. And suddenly at the same time, I was contacted by Hugh. So it was like a sign for me. Like, so this is what you need to do. You need to go onto the talent side more. You need to understand how the market's like and help other talents understand that the power is within them to change the market. It's not in the hands of the clients. So that really is what I'm doing everything at the moment with in mind, which is that each talent anywhere in the world has power over the whole market. So what you do today in just one project affects the whole industry and it affects every single person around you that does voiceover. Wow. And that's what I'm trying to educate people within Gravy for the Brain at the moment. That's very profound, actually. Um, <laughs> so with Gravy for the Brain, you give coaching to talents in your region. Uh, not, just, not just that, of course, but I educate them with everything they need to give memorable experiences and how to actually do it as a professional and how they can affect the market in a way that helps it grow rather than decline and, and, and get worse for everyone. Do you give one-on-one -on -one coaching lessons or uh, is it uh, webinars with groups of people? So the one-on-one -on -one option is available through Gravy for the Brain, actually, but it's, uh, it's an added uh, service. It's not within the membership of Gravy for the Brain, but the Gravy for the Brain experience is designed in a way where it can actually be as customized as it can get and still be affordable. There is content that is recorded like the courses, and it's a curriculum, basically. It's put in a specific way where it gives you everything you need to know that you don't need someone right in front of you to give you. It's ba basically like reading a book, but in a fun way. So you get all the information you need to prepare you to start getting into contact with our mentors. Once you have that knowledge up there, which you can do simultaneously with the training, you go into the mentoring forums, you start to speak with the mentors, you share with them your samples, your questions and everything. And it's a very dynamic process where you day to day can just communicate with all uh, the mentors we have and get feedback from them. And you know that barrier you get to uh, when you're just typing, there's, there's a specific barrier you can't pass sometimes. And that's why we have the live mentoring sessions. The live mentoring sessions help us speak out loud and, and give a voice to all the things we can do through the mentoring forums. We have a lot of mentoring sessions with all of our mentors in all territories. And it's quite insane the number of mentoring sessions you get with a, a very small subscription like that. In addition, we have some webinars that we do every month, which talk about a very specific topic that's very technical and like needs a lot of focus to understand. And it's also a, a, um, a dynamic kind of topic. Like it's not something that we can put into the courses. It needs to be very updated and, and from today, like basically. You get a lot of access to other uh, resources and a lot of content and tools that should help you grow. But the, the, the basic part of the membership that I just told you, it really is such an effective method to teach people because we have a lot of success stories at the moment, for example, that we're sharing on our, on our Facebook page. And so it's the same with uh, every other territory. So I understand that there's different uh, types of Arabic languages. Uh, do you focus on one specifically or do you go for everything? So English is English in the end. So if you're speaking English in the UK or Australia or South Africa or the US, it's English. There are different, uh, there are some different pronunciations or dialects. It's almost the same with Arabic because Arabic has one form which is modern standard Arabic. Some people call it formal Arabic or classical Arabic or has many names, but the, the, the one to describe it the best is modern standard Arabic. And that is the kind of Arabic that is, for example, present in the Quran. That is the one that if you speak it in any Arabic country, people would understand you, provided, of course, they studied that at school. 
But that's not the language we use in movies uh, locally or commercials, for example, locally. You would use it if you're talking to everyone in the Arabic region. You would use it if you're in a formal setting or if it's the news, for example, they use a modern standard Arabic. However, almost each of the Arabic countries has its own dialect. And it's very distinct. The, the difference in dialects would actually scare you sometimes if you look at Morocco compared to Egypt. Uh, I'll give you one example of one word. So in modern standard, standard Arabic, the word beautiful is gamil. So in Egypt, we can say gamil. But in Morocco, it's mizien, which is like gamil compared to mizien. So it's, it's very different, like not, not the same letters, not the same anything. And that's how confusing it can get when you're speaking dialects. Okay, so the reason why I was asking you that is because in South Africa, there are communities that speak Arabic. If anybody wants to get into voiceovers, would they be able to understand your your teachings? I'm, so I imagine they would be speaking the modern standard? Yes, uh, although the Egyptian dialect has some kind of uh, of an advantage here. Why? It's because... Most of the cinematic uh, productions and movies, songs, and all of the artistic uh, creations that were made in the last, I don't know how many years, they were done mostly in Egypt with the Egyptian dialect. So you would go into Morocco and Moroccans would understand Arabic very easily, but it would be harder for, uh, for Egyptians to understand Moroccan. Uh -huh. So that really helps uh, when we speak in Egyptian. And when we get stuck, we just shift to modern standard Arabic because it's not a language that you would use to speak at ease. It's more of a language you would speak if you want to be formal and, and classy and, and um, like high RP in, in English, you know, the mm. Queen's English. Right. Yeah. Huh, that really clarifies things. Yeah. <laughs> so then Arabic speakers here in South Africa could get into voiceovers by following Gravy for the Brain Arab Arabia. That is correct. And no matter what the dialect is you want to, to provide voiceovers in, you definitely need to focus on modern standard Arabic. There are a lot of opportunities uh, with that language. Even that, la like, even that form of the language has very slight uh, dialects. Like there is modern standard Arabic Egypt, there is modern standard Arabic Gulf, and Levantine. Okay. <laughs> Quite confusing. I'm, like, I, I, <laughs> like, don't worry about it. It's very easy when you actually get to, to, to hear the differences. But modern standard Arabic in its uh, uh, neutral form is the one with the biggest amount of projects uh, around the world. And do you think there would be opportunities for people outside of the, the region, like in South Africa, for example? Uh, yes, because we are in an age where the, the market works a bit differently than it used to. It, do it doesn't depend that much anymore on agents. Of course, agents are extremely important and uh, they, they do support the, the system uh, and, and help talents really find a lot of work. But this age has a lot of pay to play websites, has a lot of social media where you can start communicating with clients to get opportunities. The borders are no longer there somehow. So I'm pretty sure that if someone is in South Africa and they have Arabic in their you know bag, they can definitely offer that and they can definitely get opportunities through pay to play platforms and through even some countries started having agents in the Arabic region. So you could start communicating with agents. There are many that I can find on the voiceover internet database in Gravy for the Brain. And I personally am an agent next to the, my business, which is Gravy for the Brain. I have another business, which is called Evolution. And that basically is a talent agency. Aha, that is good to know. If you're enjoying this episode, give it a thumbs up. How can people reach you if they would like to take this further? So if, if someone wants to communicate on about the agent part, that would be info at evolutionvoices.com. For Gravy for the Brain, it's Nadim underscore Khaled at gravyforthebrain.com. We'll put all that in the description and on the screen as well. You also were involved in the Egyptian Voice of a Union. What is that? Like if you remember in the beginning when I told you that I wanted to make the industry better, I worked with professionals to, to work on a rate guide and define how the, the market goes a little bit. So that's not exactly a union. It's just It was just a WhatsApp group and we named it Egyptian Voice Overs Union and we just put in there every person we knew that actually was a professional voiceover local. It had maybe 20 people. Very nice conversations, a lot of respect and a lot of conversations about how we can make things better. I used their help in uh, making the rate guide that we used. And we had a very simple idea that really worked out so well locally. We made a group on WhatsApp and we called it EVU. 
And I did a kind of a bold move. I just got every single client I had and I put them in that group all together. And I basically said, so guys, voiceovers, people interested in voiceover, if you have good enough quality, if you're ready, if you live in Egypt and you're interested in reaching out to clients in Egypt, here's how it's going to go. If you can respect this rate guide, and I'm not saying it, you have to follow it. I'm just saying if you can respect that rate guide, if you can try to understand that this is what professionals charge and that's the minimum and that's the maximum and that's the average. If you can, you're more than welcome to join. You're more than welcome to get access to all these clients. But nobody talks on the group. Nobody. No messages for any kind of reason. Only the clients are allowed to post when they want voices. So somebody would go like, I want a voice with these kinds of attributes. And all the voiceovers in the group, if they fit the description, they send a sample that is requested by the, that was requested by the client to them privately on WhatsApp with their rate for what was mentioned. And that's it. If the client is interested, they just go forward. With them. That group has been working for four years or more now. And the amount of projects that went through that group is just quite insane. It really worked out well. It's still working. Like I'm looking forward to actually growing that. Even though it does compete a bit with my business, which is evolution, but that's not the idea. The idea is just trying to help the talents become better versions of themselves. And that's what it's doing right now. And I'm, I'm very proud of that. How did you set the rates? Did you copy or base yourself on US rates? So I looked at a lot of rate guides. I, uh, that was way before Gravy for the Brain. Um, I looked at the GVAA rate guide. I looked at the Gravy for the Brain rate guide. I looked at some others and I just understood from those how they treated each of the categories or genres of voiceover. And the reason I did that was because these professionals who had a lot of time were able to understand what kind of workload is it when it's that genre and what are the rights if it's that genre and what should you actually charge when it's that genre. And I just didn't take the rates. I just said, okay, let's do some research. So you, how much do you charge? You, how much do you charge? And so on. I got a lot of data, did some average, you know, uh, calculations, like to calculate the averages. And that's basically what we put, what we put in the rate guide, the averages. We did, however, use a modified version of, you know, in narrations where people sometimes do it as um, from one minute to five minutes, it's that much, from five to 10, it's that much. We did a modified version of that, and it's really working out well for a lot of clients. How do you deal with exchange rates? Because you're, you're dealing with a big region as well, and everybody's got their own currencies. Like most countries in Africa, if you are targeting a region, you would use US dollars. That's the, at the moment, it's the universal currency that you deal with when you're working over borders. I think it's the same down here in South Africa. <laughs> if we're working over borders. You as a voiceover, what is your favorite type of work? Well, the one I enjoy the most, it might sound like a cliche, but commercials, of course. Commercials have that, how do you say that? that, that kind of experience where you work with a lot of interesting people, because basically you're always in the room with a creative director who just came up with a crazy idea, or you're in the room with the marketing director of, I don't know, Mercedes Benz in Egypt or the region, or you're in the room with the CEO of the biggest, I don't know what, and you get to meet a lot of interesting people and you learn a lot from them. And what is very humbling is how they have so much respect for voiceovers. They really treat you like they understand that it's hard. It's not easy, an easy thing to do. And uh, I even have that routine sometimes where I'm like, would you like to go into the booth and give it out? A try yourself. And then they do it and they understand how it's like. So, yeah, it's, it's really it's definitely my favorite genre of commercials. What sort of big brands have you done so far? I've done a lot of brands like uh, i've like automotive for example i've almost done them all like mercedes-benz bmw peugeot volkswagen um subaru I, i've done a lot of automotive brands most of the banks here vodafone orange to salat these are the three telecommunications company i've done a lot of work for the government for most of the ministries and for the the presidency and for a lot of government authorities like if, if I were to say my biggest client at the moment would be Tlapot. It's like um, they're under the, the group of Delivery Hero and they're the biggest food ordering application in the, in the region. And they're quite the big and insane client. Like we record something like it's a big difference, but it's between 20 to 90 commercial copies a month. So 
they're they're really my biggest client at the moment. And did you get affected by the pandemic like everybody else? The pandemic affected the market, yes, but not necessarily negatively for everyone. Because during the pandemic, the you know commerce got a really big hit. Like people weren't buying, weren't going out. A lot of business struggled, so the businesses started advertising more, putting out videos to inform about COVID and this and that. So actually, a lot of professionals in the market say that maybe the uh, and I'm not saying the best time. Like COVID times were, were really bad for a lot of people, and we all lost someone during that, and it's very sad. But in regards to business, it actually had a positive impact, in my opinion. And there were a lot of opportunities if you knew where to look for them. There were a lot of opportunities in the past uh, two years. How do you look for them? Is what is your secret? Like I, I don't believe in secrets when it comes to sharing knowledge and experience. Because yeah, like some people will come to you in business and say, "Well, you can't show all your cards because basically everybody's going to start copying you and you lose everything." I kind of disagree. Because then you're basing off the competition on, you know, something negative, something where you're competing with someone, so you're depriving them of a specific kind of knowledge. No, I'd rather share everything. People become better and better versions of themselves. They raise the bar, and automatically I rise too. Because if that person rises, who was being taught by me, and he helps me in my, let's call it a. A challenge. I don't know. He joins me in the challenge of trying to make the market better in terms of pay, in terms of rights, in terms of fairness and fulfillment for everyone. Then I personally will have a higher rate uh, and a healthier way of conducting my business, and I'll definitely be able to fulfill myself with a lesser amount of projects. So there is no secret. I say this every day. You need to understand first of all what you're offering. So if you're offering voiceovers in English, for example. So, what kind of English? So, if it's neutral English only, then I like to think of it as fish tanks. Each uh, language and dialect is a different fish tank, and the fish tank here represents the market. So, how many fish tanks are you going to throw a fishing pole in? So, that's why you need to use every single language that you are able to speak and train into that, and know what languages you can give and what dialects you can provide. The more you learn and learn really well, the more opportunities you'll you'll definitely be finding. Second. I tell them they need to understand who are the decision makers, where are they, what do they do, how can I reach out to them, and you can do that through simulating how the process goes from the creation of the commercial or the creation of the script for the documentary or whatever until it reaches the point where there is a producer or agency that is calling you to record it. So, if we were to take documentaries, for example, a lot of documentaries are shot by freelance directors. And I say a lot. So if you think about it, how does the process happen? He shoots a documentary. He edits the documentary. He looks for a voiceover. He does post production, and then he sells it to the TV channels. Yeah, National Geo. Yeah, they not Geo. They produce their own movies sometimes, but they also buy content off of freelance directors. So one of the decision makers that you should be trying to profile are freelance directors because they're the ones that are going to listen to a voiceover. And be like, oh, that's quite interesting. I want that voice to do my movie. And you should do the same with each genre. That's the secret. Whether it's going to be through a P to P, a P to P, or a pay to play platform, whether it's going to be through LinkedIn, whether it's going to be through YouTube, whatever the channel is, just do that simulation and start profiling that decision maker and putting your theories as to what kind of tools and social media platforms or professional working websites they use. And design your personal brand to make you stand out on those through those uh, through those channels. You need to design it in a way where I look at you and I'm like, oh, I want to work with that guy. So that's the if you want to call it a secret, that's the secret. Yeah, secrets are never secrets. <laughs> wow, that is such fantastic information. That's mind blowing, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to take that to heart and really work on that. What would you say to somebody who's never done a voiceover and who would really like get into the industry? What would be the first steps to take? The first step to take is to educate yourself because we're in a different age. People in the past had no benchmark, had no like this is how you do voiceovers, and they follow it. They literally created how this industry works. This age has a definition of what voiceover is and how it's done. Do not reinvent the wheel. Learn until until that moment where you see things are developed well and are working well, and start building from there. So, if it took someone ten years in the past to become a professional voiceover artist with education, 
you can take a very shorter route. So you can you can take an, I don't know, three years, two years, four years, or whatever it is, depending on how dedicated you are and how much effort you put into it. So definitely seek education. And a lot of people listen to that and they're like, why would I seek education? I don't know if I have the talent or not. I need to first know from you if I have the talent. But that's kind of unfair. Do you think I could just look at you and say, oh, you have a talent or you don't? I'll give an example. Let's say we're thinking about carpentry and I have a, a shop and I'm uh, hiring carpenters and then someone comes and they're like, so do you think I'm talented? So I ask that guy, okay, start making me a chair. They don't know how to use the tools. They don't have the tools. They have nothing, absolutely zero experience. Is there any chance of them making a good chair? Maybe 0.001 of a percent, but there's no chance you can make a really good chair. But however, if you learn how to use the tools and you learn the techniques of creating a good chair, and then you start making the chair, you'll be able to do a good one. And talent here is not being able to do a good chair, but it's being able to innovate and create a better chair. One that is so much better than what we reached. So, oh, okay. So you're, you're so talented. That's amazing. Please go on. But you can't come and ask that question in the beginning, in my opinion, at least. Can people follow you on social media? Have you got any other social media tags where people can follow you? I didn't choose to be active on social media, which was not a, like a very good strategy in the beginnings, but I'm more focused now. I'm using most of them. I'm using Facebook, Instagram, uh, even TikTok. I have a profile now, LinkedIn. Like I have a lot of social media pages, which you can easily find if you type in Google, just my name, you, you'll get all the pages. You, you can contact me easily. Even my WhatsApp number is put on there. I always answer my messages. We'll put all that in the description. Thank you. Girl. So why do you say that social media is important for voiceover people? Social media is important because the voiceover business is very complex that there is no one route that you can take to reach, let's say, fame or, or success or whatever. Social media platforms educate people as to your journey. That's what happens every day on Facebook. So you see you have a friend who works in, I don't know, He's a ship captain. So you have absolutely no idea about the marine industry. But through his social media profile, sorry, his, his uh, Facebook profile or Instagram profile, you get to get a glimpse of how that world looks like. So it really educates you and makes you more aware of how other people live their lives and what uh, opinions they have, how, how, how do they make their decisions and so on. And that's what you should be analyzing to learn how you can promote yourself, how you can put yourself out there. There are a lot of examples you can check on, check on social media of ways to market yourself. You can see which ones work, which ones uh, don't. But always, always, always stick to the ethical ones. Ethics are the most important things to always keep, no matter what religion or background you're from or whatever it is. Ethics are what matters, in my opinion, because the moment you give away that, you put yourself in an area where you're doomed for failure, in my opinion it doesn't work out beautifully. The, the kind of energy you're harnessing is definitely going to blow your blow in your face. So social media is important to, to get insights from how the market works, what people like, what their lives look like, and so on. It's important to see some of the opportunities that people advertise about. Some people go and they're like, I need a voiceover to do this and that. It's very good to do some kind of, how do you say that, imprinting your personal brand in the minds of people around you. There was a really funny story once where I got a, one of my biggest clients through meeting someone while I was walking my dog. I was with my dog, just walking her, and I met someone else, and I just introduced myself. Hi, hi, blah, blah, blah. So we added each other on Facebook, and through my Facebook page, she was able to learn I do voiceovers. Years went by. And then suddenly I got a call from her and she's like, I have a friend in the UK and she's looking for, for a professional voiceover artist. I know you do voiceovers. So can you please contact her? I did. And she ended up being one of my biggest clients just because I was walking my dog, added someone on Facebook and she learned I do voiceovers from there. Yeah. Social media helps. Fabulous story. You were in VO Africa 2021. Why did you choose to participate in that? So basically, I heard about it from uh, Hugh Edwards, the CEO of Gravy for the Brain. And he was like, hey, Nadim, you're in Egypt. Why are you not in VO Africa? So I was like, what's VO Africa? He was like, this. I was like, what? And I uh, got the pleasure of meeting Chuku Emeka. Very interesting fellow. We're so like-minded. And uh, I understand what he's doing 
And he's basically trying to do what we're all doing here, which is trying to make things better for everyone and grow the industry. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I needed to, to go to that rallying point he created and meet other professionals with the same challenges so that we can put hand in hand and try to make things work better. Chuku Emeka is the guest that I interviewed last week, just before you. Oh, so, Very interesting fellow. I, I really love the guy. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was, yeah, that was really refreshing. I really appreciate that you took the time to speak with us. Thank you, Gail. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I didn't bore you or something. And no, <laughs> not at all. No, it, it's fantastic to learn the different perspective from people around the world. Well, I can say from South Africa because that's I've been speaking to South Africans mostly, but now branching out around the world, there's so much more to learn. Good luck with that. I really wish you all the best. You're a very interesting person. And I, I was really actually interested in, in watching your other uh, videos on YouTube. And I just love the energy you put out there. Your questions are very nice and you're trying to help people by sharing the knowledge. So bless you. Let's, uh, let's you. keep educating people. <laughs> Hopefully one day we'll meet. Hopefully. In real let's life. do it sometime. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in the next VO Africa. Yes, if we can do it in real life. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Cheers. All right. Okay. Cheers. Thank you for watching Talking VoiceOvers. I hope you've learned something useful in this episode. And if you don't want to miss the next ones, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.